Hey, my name is Eric Bucci, and I'm the lead pastor here at Cornerstone Church. And if this is your first time watching with us, I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for letting us come into your living room, wherever you're located right now. And I'm telling you, we're going to get through this together. I know we're going through a difficult time, and we're starting a new series today called this, Gain by Pain. And make no mistake, life can be difficult, can't it? Absolutely. And so it's not what happens to you, it's what happens in you. And how can we take these circumstances and get through it and get better instead of bitter? And that's what we're going to talk about in this series, how great men and women have soldiered through by the power of God to get through difficult times. And one of the ways we get through difficult times, everybody, is by staying connected to God and each other. And so there's a couple things we're doing. Uh, we're doing Unite 714. We're encouraging you to pray 2 Chronicles 714 at 714 a.m. and p.m. And if you can look it up in your own Bible and, and know how to pray for that scripture, it's a wonderful scripture. It's a scripture of repentance for our land. And I encourage you to look it up. The second thing we can do is we can stay connected via our small groups and also daily Tuesday to Friday, we're meeting here online and we're having it from our living room where we're meeting every day at 12 noon, Tuesday through Friday, and we're praying with each other, we're worshiping with each other. It's a wonderful time to stay connected to each other and to encourage each other during these difficult times. Also, we have our small groups via Zoom calling. If you are interested in getting involved with a small group, you can uh, contact Pastor Rich at cornerstonecheshire.com. If you have any needs or requests or anything like that, needs and requests, go to Janine at cornerstonecheshire.com. Also, our website has been updated and there's always a prayer card there as well. So there's a place for us to stay connected. Let's get right into our message today. How many of you heard this message? This verse is very famous and here it is. And we know, Romans 8, 28, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. I've heard people quote this many, many times and sometimes wrongly. That something terrible will happen. Someone will die of cancer or someone loses their job or something terrible happens in their life. And they say, well, it must have been God's will because, you know, God causes all these things to happen. No, he does not cause all these things to happen. We live in a broken world. And the beauty of God is this. He can take your tragedy and turn it into a triumph. Your mistake can become your message. God has a way of redeeming what the enemy used for evil. God can turn for good. The question is, how are we going to respond to it? And what we'd like to be able to do during this series is talk about how we can walk down that dark tunnel into the light. I don't know about you, but when this COVID-19 is behind us, I don't want to be sitting there thinking, man, I should have took better advantage of the time. No, now is the time to take advantage of this. This time of pain, this time of difficulty, and to reach out to other people. People are longing to know Jesus because everything we're standing on is being shaken, which we're going to get to in a few moments. Also today, we're going to be talking to a dear friend of ours, Don Butera, as we unpack how you walk through a painful season. He walked through one of the most painful things imaginable. You're going to hear about that in a little bit, and we're going to unpack that, and then we're going to pray together at the end. And so if you'd like to give your life to Jesus Christ, we're going to give you an opportunity as well. So we hear this verse. What's the context of this verse? It's important not to let a verse be taken without its context. I want to show you some really key elements that the Apostle Paul talks about here and how this verse actually works. There is condition clauses. There are things that connect to this verse before and after. And if we don't know that, then we're taking this out of context. So let's look to Romans 8, which is one of the most amazing chapters in the Bible. And here's Paul speaking. Paul's been through a lot. We're gonna be talking about him through this series. Paul wrote a third of the New Testament, was originally a terrorist. That's right, he was a terrorist against the early believers in the church. He was there. He was like an Osama bin Laden in some ways. He was, zealot, he was a zealot for God, killing Christians, or actually standing alongside, encouraging the killing of Christians, getting them arrested, thrown into prison. He had a miraculous encounter with God where he saw God in a vision and he turned him around and he became one of the greatest men that ever walked the planet Earth. And so if you're not familiar with the Apostle Paul, and he wrote this book called Romans, which is an amazing book written to the church at large. 
not just the Jewish people. And this is what he says, everybody. A man that's been through a lot of suffering, a man that's been in prison, a man that's been beaten, a man that's been betrayed, a man who's been under quarantine by himself, lonely. How did he handle it? And he teaches us some amazing things that are true that you and I can apply today. And here it is. For I consider, it's the Apostle Paul, for I consider, and consider means to think about, I consider that all the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. That the Apostle Paul is basically saying all of the bad stuff happening right now, no matter how bad it is, the best days are always ahead for those in Christ Jesus. Because this earth is so temporary. We're in the womb of the earth waiting to be born into eternity. And you're not going to remember these times very much. It's a blink of an eye. And what he's saying is the glory that is coming is so great, you can't even compare it. And if you don't have that heavenly mindset, and if you think this is all there is, we're truly hopeless people. And he's saying, not worth comparing with the glory, the glory of God that is to be revealed to us. For, listen to this, for the creation waits with eager longing. And the word longing is there. It's like being hungry for something. You're starving and you need to eat or you're going to die. You're longing for food. That's the kind of word used. Very, very powerful word. So for the creation waits, that means all creation waits. When you think there's an earthquake, it's like the earth is shaking, waiting for its redemption. When you see all the storms going on on the planet, the whole planet is shaking for its redemption. Eager longing for the re revealing of the sons of God, and that's me and you, both men and women, for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. So basically, the whole planet is off kilter. Why? Because sin entered in. Mankind decided to rebel against God. As a result, everything is off its axis a little bit. Everything is off. Everything is groaning. Everything falls apart. No matter how hard you try, you buy a new car, it's going to fall apart. You buy a new house, it's going to fall apart. You get a new body, it falls apart. You can even get plastic surgery, it eventually comes back down. <laughs> no matter how hard you try, everything falls apart. Why? Because the entire earth is under a curse, a curse of sin. Why? Because mankind decided to leave God's way. So everything is off and we know it inside of us. If we didn't have a sense of God and didn't have a sense of heaven and have a sense the way things should be, then we would never question the brokenness of our society. The fact that we're upset and the fact we're broken is the reason it shows us that there's something more. Indeed there is. So he goes on to say that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain freedom, right? Freedom, what's freedom? Freedom is to act and behave in the way you've been designed, not acting in a wrong way that hurts you and other people. So the freedom of the glory of the children of God, that's right. One day there's gonna be a new heavens and a new earth, which we're gonna get to in the coming weeks. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning. Have you feel like you've been groaning everybody? Oh man. I don't know about you, but when I get sick, if I get a stomach virus, I'm a wimp. I really am. Sandra, my wife, is amazing. She gets sick. She'll take care of the family. She'll do all sorts of things. And when I'm sick, I'm on the, I'm on the couch. I'm on the bed groaning. Oh, right? That groaning, like there's something more. Groaning together in the pains of childbirth. When you think of earthquakes and even these signs, they are pangs of childbirth. God is going to come back and redeem the planet. So actually, it's a good thing when you feel the shaking. I know it's difficult, but a, a mother is in great pain and agony until the birth of the child. Then from what I understand, they forget the pain. Uh, all I have to say is this. If men had to have babies, we'd have no one left on the planet. So we need to, husbands, love your wives, <laughs> okay? But together in the pains of childbirth until now, and not only their creation, but we ourselves 
who have the first fruits of the Spirit. When you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes in you. Heaven is in you. You know there's more. All of a sudden, the glory of God shows up. But you know there is more. We ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, are groaning. We groan inwardly, right? Oh, man, there's got to be more than this. How many of you have been through that? If you have not grown inwardly, you have not been alive. That's part of life. As we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, we have a down payment. We have the promissory note, which is the Bible. And God has purchased us by his blood. And our life is given to Jesus Christ. And we have the first fruits. In other words, we have the down payment of things to come but we're not in heaven yet. Have you noticed that? Absolutely. See, an adoption as sons, a redemption of our bodies. For in this hope, we were saved. In the hope of a new heaven, a new earth, that one day we'll be with God. For the joy set before him, Christ endured the cross. So important, everybody, that we know whose we are and where we're going. Now, hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is he sees? You see, we groan because we long for home. We groan because we long for home. There's got to be more than this. And one of the blessings of things being taken away from us is we begin to realize everything will be taken away from us. Everything that will be shaken will be shaken. All that remains. One day, everything we do is going to pass through the fire. Whatever we do for ourselves is going to burn away. Whatever we do for the Lord, both here and now, we take with us. And so what an amazing thing. The reason we're groaning, because we're groaning for home. Ecclesiastes says, God has set eternity into the heart of man. Mankind knows there's something more, even atheists. That's why they study so hard, look and try to find answers. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray. Like, God, what am I supposed to do? How are we supposed to pray for the situation? How does it happen? But the Spirit himself intercedes. Aren't you glad? You have somebody praying for you. It's called the Holy Spirit, part of God. The Spirit himself intercedes with us with groanings too deep for words. I believe this is your spiritual language. And every Christian has the availability, if you want to, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. And there are times you just speak your spiritual language. And sometimes I don't even know what to pray, everybody. I don't. And I'll just pray. I remember being on a mission trip and there's some terrific things that happened were horrible terrifically horrible, that I actually had to pray. I was praying in the spirit, and it's not for today, but God has given that to us. You ask and God, give me your spiritual light. Lord, let me pray with inward groans. Sometimes you don't even know what to say. The apostle Paul says, I pray in English, or not in English. <laughs> I pray with, uh, in my mind, and I pray with my spirit. And praying in your spirit is found in 1 Corinthians 14 and 12 talks about praying in the spirit. It's available to us, everybody. It's not a spiritual merit badge. It doesn't make me better than you or you better than me. It's not about that. Unfortunately, the church has made it that way. It's not about that. It's a gift for the church. Ask God, say, Holy Spirit, come fill me. Let me be able to have you pray inside of me. This is part of the power we get, everybody. And I encourage you to pray in the spirit at all times and pray with understanding, with groanings too deep for words. Sometimes we don't know what to say. Just cry out to God. And by the way, just go, God, help. And just tell him how you feel. Let it out. It's so important, everybody. And he who searches the hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So you want to pray perfect prayers, pray in the Spirit, everybody. It doesn't mean you're praying perfect prayers. It means you're allowing the Spirit to do that. Or just ask Holy Spirit, I don't know how to pray. Will you pray for me and pray with me? And, and today's not the day to talk about it and, and act it, but I encourage you. We'll be talking more about the Spirit in future weeks. And we know that those who love God, all things, you see the, you see the context, everybody? The context is all that. Now we get to the context of the verse we started off with today is this. And we know that those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. No matter how bad it gets, God can turn it for good. Absolutely he can. What I wanna do right now is I wanna show you a testimony. A testimony of a wonderful man, I consider one of my good friends, 
Love the man, Don Butera. You might have seen him during this week. We had a little time together in our Wednesday, uh, in our midday time. But he's gonna share a story with us of what he went through. Let me give you a little backdrop. Don Butera's Italian, that's why I love him so much. Passionate guy. Him and his wife are amazing. They've been in Indonesia now for over nearly 15 years. And it is the most populated, it's the largest Muslim country in the world. It's the third largest nation in the world. The first largest nation in the world is China. The second one is India. Believe it or not, the third one is the United States. And the, and the fourth one is Indonesia, which is catching up because they're having kids. Our birth weight is slower. So it's the third, it's the fourth, excuse me, the fourth most populous um, country in the world, and it's the largest Muslim place in the world. And God is working so supernaturally over there, and he's been through a lot. He's gonna share with us right now how he took the pain and made it a game. Let's listen to our interview today. Well, we're in a series right now, uh, Don. It's called Gain by Pain. And how oh. God can oh. take the worst things that the world or the enemy throws at you. And if we'll let him redeem it, all things work together for good for those that love God and are called according to his purposes. And God can turn what the devil meant for evil, God can make for good. And uh, we're talking about looking from getting gain from pain. And, and Don, uh, a missionary in Indonesia, wonderful man of God, can you just give us that story? I mean, talk about a dark time. Can you just go ahead and unpack it for us a little bit? Yeah, my, my daughter, um, she moved down here from China and married an Indonesian man, a wonderful guy. And uh, then she obviously uh, became pregnant and everything was good. My wife is actually even a, a, a nurse practitioner in women's health and babies. And she had been going along and there was no signs of any problems or anything. Now, we didn't do some deep testing. I, I guess if you knew that there was going to be a problem, you could have found it. Um, and then when, she went, when Nina was born... Um, she was born with a transposition of the great arteries. Uh, the two arteries in your heart, one that brings oxygen to your body, the other one goes to the lungs, were switched. And so she was born, and um, right away when she was born, my, uh, sorry, I still have a little PTSD on this. Um, mm. When she was born, my wife right away said, there's a problem with this baby. And uh, my wife, thank God for my wife. That was the first salvation we had there first saving of that baby was my wife just getting that baby in the NICU where she belonged and where she needed to be. And then we found out that there was a problem now in, 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 in Indonesia, in Indonesia, in Bali even less. Uh, there's, no, there's no way to do an operation on this. There's, you know, and so she was born on a Friday and so Saturday morning we got all the news. And from there we had a, at least a three day um, you know that show 24? Well, the old show 24. Well, we had a three-day period where the t clock was ticking nonstop to get us, you know, and so we had to get the baby a passport to get her out of the country. We had to get uh, – I found a doctor. Uh, I, I made one text message to Singapore and got a call from India by a doctor uh, who – I don't know how he found it. You know, it was just going all over the place. And he called us and he was the leading surgeon that does that surgery. Um, said, you gotta get, you gotta get certain medicine and they don't have it in Bali. Uh, and so it's supposed to be an intravenous form. My, my uh, son-in-law's father found it in this pharmacy in pill form. So we crushed it up and then you're praying that it's actually the real medicine because you don't know. And uh, so the she stayed alive uh, Saturday, Sunday. We had to find a plane. That was another huge miracle, finding a plane. Monday morning, uh, we prayed because the doctor said she had to have a certain procedure before she could get on the plane. And uh, there was a doctor that could do that procedure. He had done it twice, I think, <laughs> on a little baby, a little heart. And we prayed, and we all felt God said, nope, put her on the plane. And so we, we, we did, and um, the plane ended up leaving at 2 a.m. on, uh, or 5 of 2 a.m. On, on Tuesday morning. The planes, we got to the airport, they do not allow a plane to leave 
uh, if if it's not at two if it's past two o'clock in the morning. So we got there five minutes wow. uh, ahead. And this was just whoo, 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 you know. And so then my daughter said that on the plane, um, and I don't know if I said this, we God is going to get all the glory. The devil get nothing but an empty grave. And then actually. On Sunday, we started saying, forget it. We're going in the grave. We're pulling people out. So we started praying for babies in the NICU, in the hospital where they started getting healed. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that was going on, Eric. Mm. And so then she got on the plane and she said that um, uh, it was the most peaceful ride she'd ever had. The incubator, she could see angels surrounding the incubator. Um, and so she said, I was, she goes, I was just so, I wasn't on the plane. So she said, I was so and much at said, peace. That day. Let me hang there for a second. When you said she saw angels. Did she literally see angels or she felt it? She said yeah. she saw angels. This is your wife. No, it's my daughter. I mean, daughter, excuse me. I knew that. Yeah. 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 My daughter. She said, I saw angels just surrounding. Wow. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> no, I believe that. Of course. I know. <laughs> and so then we got to, they got to Singapore and the doctor said we were absolutely nuts because she hadn't had that procedure. They did that first procedure. And, and to be honest, I'll just tell you one more, uh, well, one more quick miracle. To me, the biggest miracle was I had a friend here who um, was a real prayer warrior, not a charismatic guy, just a prayer warrior. And he, when, um, when Nina was born, he committed an hour a day to pray for her. And so that was Saturday all the way through to the next Saturday, you know, after she was in Singapore. And she, he said he got up Saturday morning. The baby was supposed to have an operation on, on Monday. Uh, he said, I got up to pray. And God said, stop praying. And he was like, what? He said, stop praying. I don't want to hear it anymore. And uh, so he said, I gave an hour. So he said, I was sitting there bored. And I'll never forget that day. It was March 18th, and he said he was bored. And so he looked online to this uh, website that he goes to that has, like, daily devotionals. He just said, well, I'll just read something. And he comes up, and it pops up, and there's a baby in an incubator. Psalm 34 that talks about a baby with a heart problem that God just completely healed and took care of. And so he's like, oh, it's done. It's over. So Sunday... Uh, my, I was leaving for Singapore on Sunday. My daughter texts me and says, hey, Dad, I got Psalm 34. So I started reading it to our, uh, our congregation. Mm. And my friend stands up. He's like, it's done. It's over. No worry. So um, she had the operation on Tuesday or Monday or Tuesday. And um, the doctors opened her up and did everything they said they've never seen an operation go so perfectly usually they leave the baby open for 24 hours in case they have to go back in they said oh, with nina no problem they closed it right up and wow. you know what a few weeks later a couple of weeks later she was out of the hospital and she's perfectly healthy wow. and god showed his faithfulness dude that's what i learned more than anything that god will be faithful i'm not saying we had determined, honestly, Eric, if she died, I wasn't moving. I wasn't moving from God, not one inch, because the devil gets nothing from me. Nothing. He gets nothing. Sorry, I get so fired up on this. Don't give the devil an inch. He doesn't deserve a dime from you. Don't let him give it. Don't give it to him. So you just give God all the glory no matter what. And God showed me how faithful he was. And since then, Eric, sorry, we've had a lot of we had eight earthquakes and, uh, you know, in two weeks and all kinds of chaos going on. This was a year later. You know, God just reminded me, Donald, remember what I did? I can do it again. And so I've had, that's why I feel very peaceful through this, Eric, because God's done it before. He's going to do it again. I, he might not do it exactly the same way, but I know my God is faithful. Not because Nina's alive, but because he is who he is. And I'm not moving from that anymore. No more. I'm tired of moving from that. I'm tired of being worried and then worried, worried, worried for like, you know, two months. And then God comes through. And then I have to repent from being worried, worried, worried. And then I have to thank God, you know, then. Why don't I just start thanking God now? And then I don't have to repent three months from now. And I could just thank him in the end. That's awesome. That's incredible. You know, that's so good. And I love what you said. 
because it wasn't like, well, God, if you, if you heal, then I'm going to serve you. If not, I'm not going to. It's like the three men on the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or my, my shack, your shack, and a bungalow. Um, <laughs> but, it, you know, we're going to serve God. God's still God. No matter what we experience, he's still God. And I love that you said that, Don, because that's huge. And, and you just said something also. That painful experience, boy, was it painful. Look, what's the gain from the pain? I mean, I don't, God obviously did not send this. This is, we live in a fallen world. Things happen. God prevailed through it. Miracles happened. We had angels on the plane. We had airplanes landing just before they couldn't land. We'd had the right doctor at the right time. A, a string of lucky breaks, the world would call it. But we call it divine providence. And so God got you through this incredible difficult time. Now, what, uh, what's on the other side of this pain from what you experience? You, your wife, your daughter, your son-in-law, and, and Nina. What, what's in the other side of this? That's three years ago, correct? Yeah, three years ago, yeah. It just, for us, for me now, I just, when I face, when we come into problems, you know, when we come into situations like the building that we had, the, the wall fell from the earthquakes, we grand opening was stopped. Ravi Zachariah, we had to cancel him. You know, uh, all this stuff went down. But during it all, I'm like, you know what, God? I'm, I'm in you. This is, this is your problem, God. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 you know, how can I, how can I, I just, I just feel like, peace now when i go through situations I, I not that i'm perfect eric come on but i mean i just feel a lot more peaceful because you know what i trusted him then he came through i'm going to trust him now and he's going to come through again I, I i i don't know how to say it other than that, that that's kind of the idea that i that's the game for me the game is he's he's faithful you said something so you said something so key and so awesome that i want to repeat it it, you said this, you would worry, 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 breakthrough comes. Oh, I'm sorry, God, repent from worrying. They're like, you know, well, let's just stop that. Let's thank God in the middle of the circumstances. Let's thank God he's still God. Let's worship him for the deliverance, which we see in the book of Psalms. I mean, how many times did the psalmist, David, say, I'm going to praise you from the sanctuary once I'm through this. And so you make deposits on your praise during the process, and then when it happens, you're like, I'm not going to be bound by these sets of circumstances. And you just said something huge. And I think that's something that the gain from the pain is a lesson. So why not learn from people like Don who went through that? Why not learn from this coronavirus? Why would we let this circumstance leave us without making us better? I, I don't know about you, Don, but I want, to, I want to squeeze every last lemon drop out of this situation to make the best lemonade I possibly can. I know that's a cliche, but I can't help myself. But um, just let God take this painful set of circumstances and let us worship him because He's God's character does not change. Circumstances change. His character does not change. Who he is does not change. Whether I experience a miracle this side of heaven or not is not what my faith is based upon. It's his character. And you said that. Amen. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's like the disciples. Jesus said, go to the other side, you know, and then all that turbulence in between. But if they knew, like if they just had faith, yeah, God said he's, we're going to get to the other side, they would react so much differently in the middle of the storm, you know, mm -hmm. than get all nervous. You know, they'd say, okay, we're fighting it. It doesn't mean I don't strain at the oars, but I'm not going to worry. I'm not going I'm, I'm to do that. I'm going to trust. Well, Don, thank you so much for sharing your, your testimony about that, that pain, which brought you again. And, and you would say, you're, I know it, it rhymes, but we can't help it. We're pastors. We got to put five P, <laughs> and, you know, and all that other things. But what, what do you, what's the big takeaway out of this now? You, you're on the other side of it. Three years have gone by. You've had birthdays. You've bought her clothes. You bought her toys. You've hugged her. You kissed her. What's on the other side of that pain? What, where are you now? And I, I feel, I, I just, I rejoice that I was able to go through it. I rejoice that God showed me things like he did. Uh, would I take it away? No, I wouldn't. I, I, I just think that you, you know, what God, what the, what 
the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. You know, he brought about a blessing. And so I wouldn't, I'm thankful. The only, there's only one thing left, Eric. It's so funny. There's only one thing left. I mean, because I didn't even tell you the financial miracles. I didn't tell you about the, the owing $50,000 to the hospital. And a guy calls me up, comes in and says, how much do you owe? And lays down his credit card and says, let's go have dinner. I didn't tell you about that one. <laughs> you just did now. It's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, but like I told, I told my daughter, my daughter was like, she was just so thankful. She goes, dad, I just feel like I owe you so much. I said, there's only one thing you owe me. And I said, it's Nina. She owes me. When she's five years old, I want to dance. That's all she owes me is one dance at her birthday. Yeah, that's that's it. it. That's all of it right there. That's incredible. So God came through in a powerful way. Um, the yeah. miracle on the other side of it. And now you're facing this, this pandemic, and it's like, this is like a child's play after what you went through, right? Yeah, right? yeah it's the, the Italian thing. It's nothing. It's like nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's like nothing. Well, listen, thank you so much for sharing uh, that with us. And uh, I appreciate everyone uh, listening to this. And what a great testimony of how God got through the situation. And again, um, thanks so much, Don, for sharing that. And uh, now back to the service. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Appreciate Eric. I appreciate your church. I love you. I so appreciate Don Butera and the story he just shared. I mean, talk about a difficult thing. Look what he walked through. And you hear what he said? I wouldn't change a thing because I found God in a new way. You know, we need to run to God, not run from him. And when you and I go through circumstances, we have an opportunity to embrace it. Please understand, I'm not, we're not suggesting for a moment that we're longing for suffering. Absolutely not. But Jesus learned obedience through what he suffered. My friends, we're going to suffer in this world. Jesus told us in this world, you will have trouble. You'll be persecuted. You'll be hated because of me. That's what Jesus said. That's a promise, everybody. This is not heaven. This is earth. We have a job to do. God loves you. God has a plan for us, right? And we're looking for heaven. This is not heaven. I'm not suggesting we look around looking for pain. Absolutely not. And God, look how God came through in that set of circumstances. I love what Don said. Even if he didn't, I'm not moving an inch. I'm not giving the devil anything but an empty grave. That's all he's getting. I love it. And so we've been talking about all things work together for good for those that love God and are called according to his purposes. And this is what this is, promise is about. Let's just unpack this for a few moments. As we look at this, all things work out for good. Not all things happen because it's God's will, but God can take our pain and make it our gain. You know, we just shared this morning in our, actually uh, this past week, we shared in our midday, Pastor Rich shared, and also the men shared that we go through suffering so we can comfort others. Now, now I don't know about you, but I was comforted and I was encouraged by Don and what he went through. You see, and God gives us these experiences, not the pain, but the triumph through the pain so we can help each other out. Because we're a body, everybody. We are supposed to work together, encourage each other. And one of the most beautiful things that has happened as a result of us being on the quarantine is I've been reaching out to our missionaries and every time I reach out to one of my pastor friends or a missionary, I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged because we're all kind of in the same boat. You see, all things work out for good. That is a promise that God gives us. If we'll give God our pain, he can turn it to something beautiful. Even something horrific that God never intended for you to go through, turn to better. Look at Jesus, all the suffering Jesus went through. Look at the gain, everybody. The enemy thought he defeated God. Boy, was he surprised. And God can do great things through us. Absolutely, all things work together for good for those that love God, right? To those that love God. All things work together for good to those who love God. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, just Jesus gives us a wonderful formula for life. Not a formula to recite, but a formula to drink and to live with him. It's this. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, 
and with all of your mind. Why do we have to love God with all of our heart, our soul, and our mind? Why do you and I have to drink water and eat food and sleep? Why? I'm going to ask you a question. You can ask me. You can say it out loud. Okay. Why do we have to eat, sleep, drink, and have food? Why? Why do we have to do those things? Why? Because we're designed to eat, sleep, drink. If we didn't do that, what would happen to us, everybody? What would happen to you and I? You can say it out loud. Go ahead. You can text it. You die, right? Why? Your design is based upon eating, drinking, and sleeping. Well, guess what? Your design by God is to have fellowship with God. That's how we're designed. If we don't do that, we're hurting our design. Why do you think everything is off kilter for? Because when we deny our existence and deny the source of our being, it's like saying to ourselves, well, I don't want to, I don't want to listen, I don't want to have my heart pump blood. That's hateful. I want to do something else. Do you see that, everybody? You see, we're made by God for God. That's the beauty. It's like you're made to eat. You're made to sleep. You're made to drink, to stay alive. It's the same thing with God. Really. My friends, you know it's true. You know it's true. And why not give God more? You see, and he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart. That means the epicenter of who you are. With all your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, and your mind. God gets everything. And listen to this. When we give God everything, guess what we get? Everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. My friends, it works. You're designed to glorify God. You're designed to bless God. You're designed like a tree that's branches go to the heavens and receive the light and they begin to grow green, right? And photosynthesis takes place. And there's an exchange of oxygen and all these wonderful things happen to the plant life. Why? They are designed to flourish in the environment of creation. You and I are designed to flourish in the environment of God. That's our sustenance. He is the Son of God. Jesus brings us the photosynthesis of our spirits. I'm telling you. And what this set of circumstances and difficult circumstances do is it shakes heaven and earth, which we're going to talk about in a few moments. So love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. You know, one of the things that I'm happy about I don't like what's going on, but one thing I do like, what really matters in life? What really matters in life? The second thing, of course, is like the first. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's not all about you. If you live for yourself, you know what you start doing when you live for yourself? You start eating your own inwards. You living for yourself is like self-cannibalization. You start eating your inwards out. You're not designed to live for yourself. You're designed to live for God. You're designed to take God's light and give it to others. And every time you and I try to make me the center of the universe, I do it too. I'm in the process. I hurt myself. I hurt other people. It's just the way it is, everybody. It's just the way it is. So all things work together for good. To those who love God, if you love God, my friends, it's a promise. Memorize it. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good for those that love God and are called to his purpose. How much better is it to live for God than for yourself? Think about it. When you're doing something that really matters. I mean, everyone wants to make a legacy. People are on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, trying to keep up with another person. And maybe you got a degree so you can impress people. Maybe you got, you, you, your friends are having kids, so I'll have kids. They got a better job. I'll have a better job. We're always trying to compete with other people. We live our lives. What a vain way to live. How much better is it than to enjoy God and to work with him to make the place, the planet, a better place? So much better, everybody. It is. You and I struggle with it. 
That's what he has it, called to his purpose. And by the way, there's nothing better than serving God when you're serving God for the right reason. Nothing better, nothing better. This is a privilege for me to share the gospel with you. I love what Reader Springer says. Reader Springer is a great artist, one of the pioneers of the modern worship music. She's phenomenal. If you have Spotify or, or if you have iTunes, look her up. Rita Springer's awesome. This is what she said. You never know that God is all you need until you reach a point where God is all you have. That's what she said. So true. You'll never know that God is all you need until you reach a point where God is all you have. And when you have God, you have everything, everything. So what are you and I going to do through this pain? It's been a tough week. It has, real tough week. Um, we've lost a person in our church to this dreaded disease. I'm to this, this virus. But I know where she is. She's with Jesus in heaven. I know it as much as I'm standing on the stage. You know, this life, thank God for it. But there's so much more. God has a purpose for our lives, everybody. And I pray this wakes us up. I pray it wakes us up. Don't waste this time. Don't waste your life. This can be a gift for us. When you actually wake up and realize that everything is temporary, only God is forever. Let's serve God with all of our hearts and our minds. I'm gonna ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes wherever you're at. Let me ask you a question today. How are you with God? How are you with God? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? running around, trying to make it happen on your own. Listen, I do it too. We all do it. But there comes a point in time when you have to set and realize you're never going to be the person you're created to be until you return to your design and the person that loves you the more than anyone else in the universe. And that, my friends, is God Almighty. He loved you so much that he sent Jesus. That's right. He sent Jesus to take our place to make things right. And so if you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, paid a price that you cannot pay, all of us have sinned, all of us made mistakes. He paid the price, he said it is finished. And because of that, because of what Jesus has done, you and I can go directly to God and, check this out, we can call God Abba, Daddy God. Think about that. We don't have to sit there and try to do all these rules to make him like us. God accepts us because of what Jesus has done. We're not saved by doing good things, but we're saved to do good things because it works so much better that way. When you give your life to Christ, you're, pro you're gonna have a natural default setting to wanna do things that are right because you know that's the way it's supposed to be. And so if you've never given your life to Jesus, today's the day. Muhammad can't save you. The prophet can't save you. Allah can't save you. Buddhism can't save you. There's only one name under which heaven and earth can you be saved. It's through Jesus Christ. The whole world has to go through Jesus. Have you gone through Jesus? If you like it today, a couple things you need to be able to do. Number one, believe he is God. Believe that he went to the cross and died for your sins and rose again. And then accept the gift. He's given you, he's signing the deed of your life. And he's saying, paid in full, all your sins are gone. But you have to receive it. If you'd like to do that today, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now, okay? Just pray after me this way, if you mean it from your heart. Lord Jesus, that's right. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross to pay for my sins. I believe you rose again from the dead. I ask you right now to forgive me of everything I've ever done wrong, both known and unknown. And today, I hand my life over to you. 
this is not my life. It is yours. It is yours. Come in my life now in Jesus' name. Thank you that I am your child. Based upon what you did, Jesus, I am your child. I am part of your family in Jesus' name. Let me ask you another question. Maybe some of you have been walking with God and you just kind of, you've gotten distracted. I've done it too. Listen, we all do it. Now's a great opportunity to, to examine our lives and let's get right with God. How do we get right with God? We get right with God by surrender. I want to encourage you to get in the Bible every day, even if it's 15 minutes. We go through the Bible in a year as a church. I go through it every year. I love it. There's a lot of the ways we want to help you on your journey, okay? You see, I love this. Peace isn't the absence of trouble. <laughs> no. Peace is the presence of God. No matter what you and I are facing, God is our peace.